like what are the top companies doing those more humanitarian issues? Like I can probably name, you know, I can name like four space companies, Mm -hmm. but I don't think I can name four companies trying to provide clean water to everyone on the earth. My name is Dooley and you're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us. What are your thoughts on moving to Chicago instead of living in Denver? Like, how is that? I like it more than I thought it would, honestly. Um, It's a really cool city. I feel like I still don't know any of Chicago at all. Like, people talk about stuff, and I just have (laughs) no idea the neighborhoods or anything. Um, But I I like it a lot, man. I like it because, like, where I feel is feels pretty residential. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you just hop on a train for 10 minutes, and you're, like, Mm -hmm. in a massive downtown city. Uh, and there's a lot of really cool stuff here. So yeah, I like it a lot. Where uh, did you grow up again? Um, so I'm Northern suburbs, more like Winneka area. Oh, okay, um, nice. Yeah. So I'm outside of the city. Honestly, even the city itself is, I've obviously been many a times and, uh, it's great, but I'm also that same sentiment of like unfamiliar in a way is it feels like whenever I'm back there and now my friends live in the city, um, like when I go around and stuff, I don't necessarily know where to go as much as they just kind of take the way and everything. Um, I've got an interesting yeah. question though about Chicago, even from your experience, like business and startup wise, how is the energy of Chicago felt different than Denver? If there is a difference. Yeah. I just joined a Chicago tech Slack mm-hmm. uh, group, which is like a lot of uh, startup people in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've only been introduced to people in finance. I, I work at like a fintech yeah. and basically everyone I know works at fintechs. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if that's like a Chicago thing, but <laughs> I, I don't, or like, maybe I'm just not, maybe that's the only scene I've been exposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, but it feels like there's less diversity of startups. I don't know. Like, I feel like at Denver, tech things you go and people are just working on like Mm. stuff just like all over the place like could be a million different things um but i've met so many people working at fintechs here yeah um which is cool i actually like like fintechs a lot but Mm. i haven't really done any of like the denver startup week esque Mm. stuff here um so i haven't dove into to to like tech startup scene it seems i don't know it seems not as happening as Denver's mm-hmm. it's like my initial vibe of it. Like Denver seemed like there was always a lot yeah. going on and just yeah. like a lot of like effort into growing it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't know if I've seen here, but I also might just not be in the right channels. Yeah. 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 Um, I was going to say something I've kind of noticed from a feeling standpoint. Also, I haven't had the Chicago experience really, um, but coming to Denver, I feel like, when you're in the startup space everyone wants each other's startups to win if that makes sense like I feel like when I was either going to things or even just the nature of communicating with people in the space is like okay how can we help you get wherever and I've also feel like I've got that sentiment from the Chicago people or anything um but I guess the feeling at where I am not as attracted to like moving to New York right in this moment or Chicago is um it's not even competitive nature is the right word for it, but it feels like it's you either kind of did it already and like you've earned your stripes or you're just like kind of the schmuck like other person. Whereas yeah. in Denver, it feels like in trying it, everyone's like, okay, let's go, let's go. Chicago's like, we'll talk to you when you get up here. I don't yeah, know. How to... I feel that too, man. Cause I don't, is it, was it tech stars like Brad Fell who started that like mm-hmm. the rising tide lifts all boats? Mm-hmm. sort of saying where it's yeah. like you know if like startups in our community do well like we'll all start doing well mm-hmm. um but like i felt that there actually like you know we're both like founders and you kind of do feel it when you're at startup events yeah um like even if you meet someone who's doing like something kind of similar to you they're not like walking mm-hmm. away like oh we got to fucking beat those people yeah no, like yeah. oh that's cool they're working on it too like yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if I, I feel that out here, but that's honestly such a good 
dude, that's such a good like uh, community to have. It's mm-hmm. such a good attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I've never spent any time like in the valley, where, like yeah. you know, start a startup like center of the world. Have you ever I, interacted I've, with anyone from there? Or been there? Not not in like a startup interacting fashion. I've been to Oakland before in San Francisco with in terms of visiting my brother out there and we have some family friends out there. Um, but I haven't done it from the startup scene standpoint, which I feel like just in, in kind of hearing and passing though, is everything you do there just seems less crazy. I think people have like seen the craziest things explode and work like work out. And so that's also one kind of cultural shift that just even not really having experienced it, I just sort of feel is go, in going to San Francisco, there's more funding for more craziness <laughs> yeah. like whereas yeah, yeah. chicago new york feels like you kind of had to like get up there denver's like we're all trying to support each other in some sort of way and kind of make it and then san francisco there's just this massive divide of everyone starting something some people have made it but that in between is like god damn it it might just be crazy enough to work <laughs> yeah dude i actually just started re-watching silicon valley mm. uh and actually like I love that everyone in the show, like everywhere he goes, has their own startup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like he's like just at like Best Buy and the guy's pitching him on an app or like his doctor is like yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I actually haven't seen, I've seen episodes of the show. I haven't watched the show. So, dude, it's, it's really funny. Yeah. Especially, you know, being familiar with that world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, maybe I do. I do. I should kind of look into that because I feel like it's a good way also to kind of laugh at yourself in a way, like the little yeah, dude. The shit where it just comes up to like I'll be in an Uber and then it'll be like, oh, like is this what you do? Like, oh, I work on this stuff. Like, what about you? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I do the startup thing. They're like, oh, well, what is it? And all of a sudden, eight minutes in, I'm like full pitching the vision. You know, it's like, god <laughs> damn it, I wasn't trying to do this. <laughs> like, I'm just trying to get to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, well, even with that, so you mentioned working on a potential new startup now before even hearing about that what has your experience been with sort of I guess leaving the I guess it ended as spot post right but was it Newton at the start like what was that kind of journey and then having that sort of wrap up like how has that felt now sort of moving past that I mean honestly like looking back at it now it's like just had no idea what we were doing (laughs) like honestly like looking at it now I'm like we were so like uninvestable like I would have never invested in our like I don't know just just in that company in general uh just because like I don't know there's just like so many things that I feel like I didn't know Mm -hmm. about companies and like how to grow a company at that point Mm -hmm. uh which I'm sure I'll be saying the same thing like you know yeah. five years from now about me today yeah. but uh i don't know the new the dude the spot post thing was like it's like hard because like so i mean spot post we basically thrived on the event industry yeah um and so you know like with covid ha- like happening like when that started like we really only had like four months of runway left mm-hmm. uh and i don't know we just like couldn't think of a pivot and it just kind of like killed it. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of think we got out easy. Like mm-hmm. I kind of think like COVID coming and like kind of completely crushing it yeah. just like made it such an obvious choice to move on. Yeah. Um, so like, I honestly think we kind of got like out of it easy. Like there was just a million signs that like, all right, it's time to like call it. Yeah. I, I'm always curious like what would have happened if like that didn't happen. Like what I'd still be just like doing Uber Eats and working on it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I love that. I, I don't like, obviously I wish it would have worked out, but uh, I don't know. I learned a lot from that and I, I don't really have any, any regrets. Um, mm-hmm. But what's interesting and like, like working on a new startup now, I don't know, just like much different approach than mm-hmm. how we did. And then like how I was doing spot post. Mm-hmm. um like part of the reason i'm starting to work on a new startup and like probably want to leave my job here pretty soon is like 
basically what I do at my job now feels like starting a company. Yeah. Like, you know, like our company, it's pretty big size. We're at like a billion dollar valuation, but basically like it's figuring out the exact same problems that mm. like we're doing when we're like super tiny, like, Oh, like what is our vision? And like, mm. who are our customers? And like, what are our products going to be? Yeah. And, uh, and I feel like that's not uncommon. Like the people are just always, you're just like kind of always answering those questions. Mm-hmm. I've just kind of realized that like, I don't know, if I'm going to be putting in that much work to like answer that. Mm-hmm. Might as well be something I'm working on rather than someone yeah. else owning it. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Cause I feel like I've still sort of lacked that experience in working with other companies per se. Um, like I kind of done the pocket change thing and I'm still sort of in there. But also same sort of mantra of even with messing with the music stuff, you kind of start to realize, okay, on the outer layer, it's okay, I love making beats and sharing it and I'm trying to do some shows. But when you really break down the the money side of it, it all becomes the exact same shit of, okay, what is the actual product itself? Is it the collection of songs? Is it the show style? Is it this? And then how are we distributing that to people? Is it selling it via online is it promo material are we throwing events like and you kind of start to break down it's all the exact same shit um just thrown into another world and so yeah i guess it's interesting for you to now enter into getting legitimate experience from with trained professionals in it um and kind of coming to that same terms like fuck it what if i can do this shit why not just do it how i want to do it instead <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, it's just like, like, honestly, yeah, I mean, it it just comes down to like money. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, essentially, but yeah, dude, I like, and and actually thinking about money, like, I don't know, working at this bigger company now, it makes like, it's so much easier to make mistakes because like a mistake, like building the wrong feature for like three months doesn't just like ruin you. Um, And so it is like very similar, but it's also different because it's like, I don't know, there's not as much pressure about like building things. And like, we know we're going to be fine for the next few years. So it's definitely less pressure and like anxiety than doing something on your own. Mm-hmm. But like, the work is like, so I was like, so shocked at how similar it was. Yeah. To, like, yeah. Feeling like going from like a tiny little three person company to like this, you know, 400 person company. Mm-hmm. I was surprised like how similar, like, the conversations and work and stuff are. Yeah. Do you feel do you feel a social side of things are different? Like not within the company, but I guess within yourself. Like in a startup, sometimes you have the pressure of, oh, I'm doing this and oh my friends are going out right now and it's a Wednesday night, but I should be focused on this big thing we've got coming up next week. Like how has that shift changed or has it changed or what's your emotional response been to the social life side yeah dude it it used to be the same like i was like fully bought in to this company Mm -hmm. amount like i was fully bought in like very similar feeling to how the startup was like i was like willing to like you know work on a saturday and like or like not go out one night and just like you know work on a presentation or something Mm -hmm. um and uh actually just like at the beginning of this year i've just like totally put up the walls now and like Mm -hmm. not let it take up that space in my head where like, I'm going to bed thinking about it. Yeah. Um, Cause honestly, like it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like I, I, <laughs> I, I, was like, I like cared so much and uh, you know, like for the past, like, you know, year, like there were weeks where I was just like working ridiculous hours and, like, mm-hmm. and together and like, nobody cares, dude. Like, yeah nobody cares nobody remembers and so yeah. like going into this year um we're like now i'm trying to get more serious about like working on a startup on the side mm-hmm. like i've just put up like seriously hard walls of like yeah. right, like 5 p.m like i'm not going to be working on shit yeah. for this company and uh it's made like no difference like nobody's like mm. hey like you're slacking or anything like nobody cares yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah as long as you're doing your shit at the end of the day it's like yeah so like i used to be way like mentally way more bought into it Mm -hmm. um but i actually like have enjoyed it more recently putting up those 
mm. those barriers. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've um, had a conversation with someone as well about like at the end of the day, work is work, even if it's something you're passionate about or anything like that. Like you're putting in hours, energy, all this stuff um, towards it. There becomes a fine line when it's like a super passion based thing or, or stuff like that. But um, the conversation essentially went to and just a friend working um, at her job right now being like, I don't make enough to like deal with this bullshit, but also I don't not like the expectations on me are pretty acceptable. Like to where she's like got her side of stuff to where she does what she needs to get done gets paid she doesn't have she can close her laptop and be gone but then there's kind of the well if I'm already going to be at the laptop all day and it's taking up my paid time should I go and dive into a more intense company and get more responsibilities and all this stuff so I feel like it's an interesting convo around like when you have the walls around work anyways is it worth fucking diving in getting super intense about it trying to get more money out of it or the kind of comfort of, well, I can just make a little bit and then I have my extra time at the end of the day to do whatever I want to do, less money. Um, I don't know. I think it's just a constant question I, I'm always curious about with people is how do those lines mold? And um, I think it sounds like you've got a cool way of actually executing at like a high level company, but then you found your walls to open up. So, yeah, no, it is like an interesting balance. Um, I mean, it's like, I don't know, I guess it's just as, as much as you can handle. Like, honestly, for me, like, if I'm going to be, like, you know, I'm working, uh, but, like, I don't know. There's, like, a, I feel like I have different work modes where, like, really grinding, just kind of, like, working and then, like, casually, like, going in and out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, like, I feel like I only have, like, a limited amount of time where I'm, like, just, like, really, really hyper-focused and, like, grinding yeah. and, like, like, you know, cranking out a ton of stuff um and so like now when i'm thinking about it i'm like i don't really want to use that on like my job like if i use that time like you know just like for i say like say like an hour of that a day or like you know Mm -hmm. i can really just like mentally focus in on something it's like i don't know i feel like i don't get that much more out of it if i'm doing it at my real job so i just kind of save it for work also this is totally coming where like my job has just been like kicking me in the ass so maybe i'm just fed up with it yeah, <laughs> uh, dude, the work stuff is crazy. Actually, I've we got a new CTO, mm-hmm. um, and he's like, he is like kind of fucking things up for our company. Like, <laughs> I I don't know, man, dude. Like, we've had so many people leave, and uh, it kind of feels like a tide is turning at our company. Uh, it's like an interesting thing to be at right now. Um, and what, in what right way? Now. Well, like, dude, we're like, we're like three years old. Uh, and, you know, we've just like grown so fast. And we're, we're like, hundred boys. And like, literally, you know, since I've been here, everyone is just like, wants like a ton of shares. It's like, you know, this is going to, we're going to IPO like $50 billion. And this is like, how I'm going to retire. And, uh, and then it's like, we got this new CTO and he just starts like making these like very small changes. Uh, and then it's like one person kind of like starts to leave because they're unhappy. And then it's like, you know, that person makes a few other people leave. And honestly in the past like few months, we probably had like 50 people leave. Mm -hmm. Um, and now we're starting to have like some really high up people leave. And like in the past, like, I don't know, maybe like four months, it's gone from like everyone bitch being this like extremely bullish, yeah. like, like, oh my God, like this is it. To like literally people just being like, we're fucked. Like we got to fucking get out of here. <laughs> and like, I mean, I don't know. From like my view, it's all come down to this like our CTO, who's, who's my boss, by the way. And I, I don't know. It's like an interesting thing to see. I don't think I've ever like, really seen like bad management or i don't know you hear about like bad yeah. managers but it's it's interesting to see how like i don't know how fast things can change yeah um but i think i'm trying to get out 
I think I'm going to start looking for other things. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. There's something um, from like the greatest, the greatest and weakest strength of a, of a human is there like adaptability. And so on the great side, or I guess, so the great side is you can come in learn things real quick and all of a sudden we can evolve and do those sorts of things. On the downside of the adaptability is we also, there's the toxic side, which we can get used to things that are really um, distasteful or bad or for toxic to ourselves, both physically, but I'm actually talking more mentally and like lifestyle. But then it comes to that sort of work things where you think everything's great and it's just like that now. But in a matter of two or three months, if you start to feel a certain type of way and that becomes a general, like a energy happening, whether it's a company or in a town or something like shit can just fucking left turn because we as humans will adapt. Like we will just go and shift our ways and then find our new paths. And so it's interesting in that sort of context of a company that's maybe running, like got some crazy good energy going and a couple of little decisions or things here or there um, can change everything, both for the positive or the uh, downturn. Uh, yeah. Know. Yeah. It's crazy stuff, man. But I do like Chicago. Yeah. So uh, a car left over in front of our apartment this morning. Uh, there's like a big car crash right outside of our. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. What's up? Might sell these hockey sticks. I've got a guy. Huh? We're trying to, I want to call it Grant. So, Grant, we got a little. <laughs> Pete, you can come in. And Pete's going to join the, the podcast for this section. Oh, we got Hubert, too. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> podcast. Do you have, is someone already buying them? No. I think they come over, though. Yeah, if you can get them, there's a guy I've got that was supposed to message back yesterday. I've tried like three people. Yeah. All right. Great point. Basically, so living the <laughs> the startup life, uh, I have no money. And so we have these <laughs> uh, hockey sticks, one of which is actually our old roommates. I have one. Another one, I think, is our old roommates. And so then now we're trying to sell them on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> Get some uh, get some beer money for the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Man. Dude, I like Facebook Marketplace a lot. Uh, we like furnished our entire apartment off for Facebook oh. Marketplace. I actually think and, from, a, from a buyer's perspective, it's awesome. From the selling, I've struggled to not just undervalue my shit to sell it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. But yeah, from a buyer's perspective, dude, it's like great. I actually remember when it came out and I was like, who the fuck is going to use this? Yeah. yeah and uh, now I'm like on it all the time, just like looking at <laughs> random <laughs> stuff to buy. Yeah. So what are your thoughts of even that? Facebook's always been making the, the big moves. What are your thoughts on the uh, whole metaverse thing? Dude, I'm, I'm excited for the metaverse. <laughs> I actually <laughs> am. Like, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really cool. You know, it's like, you know how like, uh, our parents are like, you know, like just old people in general, like pretty bad with tech. Mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend is like really bad with tech, like today. And I'm always like, you're going to be one of those older people who's really bad at technology. And she's like, no, I'm not. Like, what am I not going to be able to, to do? Yeah. And I've realized now it's the metaverse. Like, <laughs> I think, like, I think uh, that's going to be like the thing that, you know, people from our generation don't pick up yeah. and make us seem like really old and we don't know how to do anything and we're like 70 and everybody's limited up in the metaverse and we yeah. don't even know how to how to do anything but i'm i'm stoked i so think it's really cool what because this is also where i get my own confusion on i've obviously seen the videos i've watched stuff about it how do you actually see it tangibly playing into someone like your girlfriend's life, right? There's people who may be in the art space buying NFTs. There's this sort of real estate aspect too, which I still struggle to understand. So I'm like, who, <laughs> where is the space? Okay, so that's where I go. <laughs> like, yeah, it seems like there's like an infinite amount of space. Like, why is anything valuable yeah. to real estate, dude? Like, cause um, yeah, when you go to that route, like on earth, I guess you could say there's still, like I could just buy a random thing, but 
where everyone else is is like but i'm like can't you yeah. just can't you just teleport over there at that point so why is that real estate like well, that's eliminating like the, there you go yeah was, well that, that's like the big question like is uh does location matter like is like relative space matter in the metaverse because like if so then real estate becomes you know worth a lot because you want your thing to be next to other things mm -hmm. uh but like if location doesn't matter like if it's easy to navigate wherever mm -hmm. uh then and it like seems like everything shouldn't be expensive but yeah that and that's where i start to lose my grip on it because i get the whole virtual reality it, like augmented reality version of okay we get our glasses on and we play cards next to each other in a room that you designed as if it were a video game world and like you can actually own shit that makes sense to me as like an entertainment and you're paying for entertainment and ownership in games the same way you pay for uh, the skins in Fortnite or whatever like people just like that shit yeah but then there's the other side where it's like if this is not just a big video game where you can technically own shit what else is it really yeah or is it really anything else and is it just maybe the greatest video game ever about to be created slash is being created and you can own part of it right i mean like i actually i think there's a lot of cool work stuff in it mm -hmm. um like have you ever heard of the app called gather town mm -hmm. um but anyways, it's just like you get a little character, like a little bit character, mm -hmm. and you're on this like map and you just walk around. Um, but like we set them up with our company and then like as you walk around, as you get near like another little bit character, like their video just pops up on the screen like this. Yeah. Um, but anyways, what you do is you have like a little room and it's just like a happy hour and you're walking around and it's just like kind of feels like you're running into people. You can also sit down and play games. Um, <laughs> what is this called? <laughs> like, it's called Gather Town. Gather Town. Gather. Um, Gather. It's cool, honestly, dude. It is like I, I actually love the idea. Um, yeah, so you have this like little character. You just kind of walk around, and, like talk with people, and it's like the most fun virtual like event that I think I've participated in. Like. Honestly, the virtual happy hours and stuff that mm. a work will push on you are just miserable. Yeah. Uh, just like people sit in a Zoom. It's like, yeah, and you don't know how he's having fun. You're supposed to talk. Yeah. And so, like, I like the idea of it for that just because it's like makes things fun. Um, like, honestly, would think I, I kind of want our company to start using it more just because it's like, it just makes the interactions you have mm -hmm. like i don't know more fun like any yeah. interaction that you have right now that's just like with a screen that mm -hmm. you're just like looking at i feel like there's a way to make that a lot more enjoyable um but even that like it kind of goes back to the video game thing like i'm literally imagining my first person call of duty thing yet when i approach another character like it's you and then maybe, yeah, you have your FaceTime up there. And because it's a happy hour, we're not surrounded by <laughs> war stuff and guns, but instead it's like a little table and whatever the design of it is. Like, is it at the end of the day, when you break it down, just this large interactive explorative video game? Yeah, I mean, I guess. And like, where do you? I you guess it is. I mean, I guess like the... the, the that like thought is like video uh, like video games are like those video games are trying to mimic life yeah uh so it like i guess it is just like a large interactive video game for like whatever it might be yeah um like i play this game called uh oh uh, writer's republic Mm -hmm. which is like this big open world like extreme sports one mm -hmm. uh but everyone's in there just like skiing and, and mountain biking and stuff mm -hmm. um and it is just like a video game but it's also trying to mimic life uh but so then where when the whole decentralization of it comes in 
where do the graphics even come from? Dude, I could not tell you. <laughs> like, um, that, that's I where mean, I'm like, like, I'm lost on the decent. I get, again, that owning a token under a certain set of code that's backed by the whole system and it's not central, that makes sense to me. But where the digital existence of the visuals of all this is like, Okay, other people just making it open source. And even then, what's to say it's kind of more Minecraft boxy version versus there's some animation nowadays that's like really scary real. Like, yeah, who chose that? Yeah. And I honestly think like anything in the the metaverse will be like super bad, like graphics wise for a long time. Like actually, uh, I know Snoop Dogg did a concert. Um, <laughs> Like you had to buy like an NFT and then you got, that was like your ticket yeah. <laughs> and then you didn't do it. But I'm like, what did that even look like? Like mm. you gotta just be there. But um, I mean, like the graphics of it and everything is, and I'm by far no means like an expert in this, but it's like, I do still think it's like, you know, either like rendered on the machine you're on. It's like, you're running like an application, mm. but it's really the, the data part that's like the mm. big part um that's like decentralized and like just like proof of ownership for digital items mm -hmm. within those verse like within those metaverses but um i also just have absolutely no idea so you know what else is kind of funny i was thinking about people who kind of nay say it right now like oh well what's the point like who cares they, like the power of the of the ownership thing is first off in a million different items but i actually go back to check writing or credit cards like even whatever hundreds of years ago like writing a check you're like oh well, he signed it you're like well i could just fucking sign it and pretend to be him like but it, it's his signature dude <laughs> it's like right. the amount of value we as society hold to the like legitimizing of a cent of an item um and then same thing with like credit cards and just the trust we actually have in that yeah both of which can be fraud this is just an example of how it can't but my point of it is how intensely important it has been in our society to like validate ownership and this yeah. is the way to really do it and that too is where i'm kind of to any of the people who are like oh no it's just a phase like no it's not i don't know how it's going to actually expand or be used all the time and there's a bunch of whether it be scam or dumb ways to do it now, um, it's not going to go away. So that's for us. I'm also, I just need to learn more about this because I just don't. Yeah, I, I'm not like that like knowledgeable about it either. But it's like, I mean, honestly, just like, um, I mean, just, just the concept of like blockchain and like NFTs and like proof of ownership for digital items I kind of feel like it's probably the most realistic part of all this. Cause like, I don't know. I think like when people think NFTs, it's just like, you know, a monkey, like an ape. And like, it's like basically just like artwork and like random crap <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. um, but there's really no reason that like any digital thing you buy can't have like an NFT tied to it. Like if you mm -hmm. buy something from an app store or like, I don't know, even like your, subscription to netflix or just like any digital item like i feel like we're buying digital stuff all the time yeah. um it's like i don't know just personally it's like i, I don't see why um like I, I don't see how adding that like layer of like proof of mm -hmm. digital ownership would hurt any of that yeah um but i think it'll probably just be done in a way where it doesn't feel like you're I don't know, owning an NFT. Mm -hmm. um, but because uh, actually I, I know a friend of mine is working on like a startup for um, video games <laughs> and uh, basically like incorporating NFTs into like microtransactions. So yeah. when you buy a skin in Fortnite, you just like, you know, they have an internal uh, chain and like you just have ownership of that on that chain and it's just how they keep track of, of it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I, I think the technology is cool, but. Well, there's also the, um, in the music side, I talked to a buddy about this also, 
um, you can essentially like invest in people's content in a way that actually benefits them. So say, for example, if I put out a song or something, and now, you know, I'm small, like have a very little following, get to whatever, but there's someone out there who um, wants to like buy in on like a stake of my streaming moving forward, my streaming catalog moving forward. They essentially can like buy in on that and get some sort of, maybe it's some percent deal that I actually manifest myself. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'll give you this NFT will be worth whatever 1% of all my things moving forward. And they own like a digital stake in my song. And then I get a percent or like they purchase in on that. I get a percent of that as it gets purchased and sold. So someone else, them doing it, my songs start to get more popular. They're like, okay, wait, 1% of this catalog is now worth $4,000. $4,000. I'm going to sell it to this other guy. That guy buys in for 4k. I can still get a percent of that transfer of ownership. And then now another person is like invested in and all of a sudden you become Drake and it's like, okay, your song catalog is now worth whatever, tens of millions or something. Yeah. People along the way have been able to like buy in and invest in your digital creation simultaneously as the creator, every time that that's transferring or getting sold, I'm still getting money back from it. And then, so that model also is super cool to me because I think it creates like a, it's almost like a subscription investment under what would be a piece of content. And then the creator themselves can take ownership and how they sell it and distribute it and make more money off of it instead of some, the middleman like label, for example, owning the rights to your songs and then selling them to another label. Yeah. Um, that was really cool. It's like being able to go public without uh, having to actually like go through any of that process and like yeah, be yeah, actually yeah. have like Nipsey and everything. Um, which yeah. is also where I think the madness is. <laughs> which because... is also like it's completely unregulated and you can <laughs> just like, <laughs> yeah. If you make a lot of money going public, so when now all of a sudden it's anyone can go public, that's where you get all this fucking ape yeah, yeah, board apes and all that shit. It's like, why? It's a fucking, like, okay. <laughs> I know. I guess, dude, so, like, I don't know, just, like, thinking about, like, the metaverse and all this stuff, it's, like, I guess I just don't know what else would happen or, like, how else technology is going to evolve. Like, it seems like that's the only really future that I hear about for it. Um, like, I just don't even know, like, I don't know, maybe we just keep progressing down this like phones thing but like as far as like the future of technology <laughs> i'm like, like yeah 7G. I'm like, <laughs> we're like god damn it, don't need another g yeah <laughs> well i'm like i'm like i don't know what else would like happen i don't know like it seems like people are trying to push it already yeah, yeah uh yeah. like if if facebook is rebranding to meta like it seems like there'll be at least a pretty decent effort to get people what are your thoughts on that what are your thoughts then on space technology and even just space in general? Like, oh, dude, I love space. Honestly, that's actually one of my like life goals is to go to space. Really? Which I think it might happen. I feel like it's <laughs> probably easier now than it's ever been. Like, you just have to be really rich. Yeah. Um, yeah. and be able to like buy a spot. But uh, yeah, dude, I think that that's pretty cool. I don't know. It's like. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I guess, uh, I don't know. Like, I think it's cool for travel. Like, I actually think, like, a space travel thing Mm -hmm. would be sick. Like, to be able to, like, just go up and stay in something like the ISS for a few days. Just, like, float around and then come back. (laughs) Like, I would be all about that. But, yeah, I don't know. My thought thought goes to, I think it's almost really cool, but... I think that there's a handful of things much more like when we talk much more, even the word important is kind of hard to, to use here, but much more like critical to put our energy towards first. And we're almost there before focusing on space. So like right. when you come into the like access to clean water or the plumbing things, or these kind of a little bit of like world issues. And then you're like, Oh, space, well, it helps advance our technology. We put it back in. Part of me is like, yeah, but then part of me is like, 
okay, there is a very clear money to like root solving some issues into like basic education, food, water, health. That we talk about space as some savior, like, oh, we can go to Mars, or like we're gonna need to figure it out eventually. But even that's like you're talking fucked up Mars is like even if we were able to kind of get some life form plant things up there going and it's like it's fucking just sun cancer rays like no access to anything all this stuff like how much easier it is to solve the problems we have right now for a more harmonious like thing and then space be this sort of side bonus once we've got that solved so that's my kind of thoughts with space Elon Musk I think actually I think he's hilarious and like my favorite just fuck like he's just a fuck boy but also like he even did a tweet the other day that was like so show me where like the 30 billion needs to go to like solve world hunger like let's do it and i legitimately yeah. think he's serious and i legitimately think there's a way to actually like can we not just write this off as a dumb tweet but like the legitimate what he's actually saying is like there's a way that we can actually fix all this shit and then focus on space like it's almost a shame his tweet became a joke because i'm kind of like no 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 like let's do it let's do it fucking no i remember it. seeing that too who was like he tweeting at where someone was basically like similar thing like you know there's so many problems here <laughs> the fuck is money and he really i feel like that was a serious offer that he yeah. had like if you can the- show me a plan for 10 billion dollars to fix this issue like yeah i'll do it but it needs to be like a solid plan not just continuously throw blindly through money at it yeah 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 what was he tweeting that at it could have been the un i don't actually know but it might yeah. have been the un has, has some like number published about how they think they could actually solve an issue or at least minimize it to a point of it no longer being like, right like the cost to like yeah provide like, the entire right world with clean water or something yeah 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 um but yeah it's that kind of shit too where i'm like uh, it's actually strangely attainable like attainable over a set period of years if it just became our focus but we're like losing focus on it is where everyone like thinks it's kind of fine enough or they know it's terrible but just think it's too hard to fix but i don't know i really think it's just a focus issue as a society and like what we value that's where i get mad at the space thing is we've glorified space as some cool thing i'm like wouldn't it be cool if we could like all you know have basic human standards <laughs> like <laughs> so there's kind of that vibe of, i don't know i love the whole idea of, i did astronomy class in high school and was like did all the extra credit assignments looking at the stars and these sort of things like i'm all for it it's just like ah uh, can we just focus up for a sec yeah i mean it is like i don't know that balance is like really really hard to find i also just think <laughs> you know, people want to solve problems that are in front of them. Yeah. So anyone who's trying to go to space is not facing a clean water, and yeah. like hunger problem. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What, what are like the top? Are there like, like what are the top companies doing those more humanitarian issues? Like I could probably name, you know, I can name like four space companies Mm. but i don't think i can name four companies trying to provide clean water to everyone on the earth (laughs) that's i i I agree it's there's (laughs) or goes to charity waters like consider and that's the name of the charity water but they're considered to be one of the top organizations working to solve this and they've got a model and system for it but when it comes down to the actual companies like you instantly go to the big, big wigs like Google, Facebook, Amazon, all that. I think they just, they have these massive budgets that they kind of throw in, but then it, it's just the lack of, it's not even accountability with the organizations that they're giving them to, but like, I literally think it's a cultural mind state that we need to be in. Because right now it kind of just, again, feels like these billionaires will just tweet out, they're writing a big check. And we all retweet it and then it goes away and then we forget about it. And then no one knows what happens with it, how well it actually did. How are we monitoring it? How is it keeping up on a 10, 50, hundred year plan? Like what's the actual issues we're talking about when shit's not clean. So again, the nonprofits are doing this, but the voice and the money and the power behind them are small. And then the 
corporate places will have a wing of their company to do it, but it just has lost a sense of priority. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the best companies are as much as it's like, there are companies that like build it into their brand that have scaled. Um, but even then you're kind of just like, hmm. but I think that's also the good first step is at least doing something. Um, yeah. Well, that's what I was about to say. Like, do you it. think, like, do you think we're trending in the right direction mm -hmm. or yeah. is it like getting worse? No, no, no. I think we're trending in the right direction. It's what's getting, what makes it, in my opinion, what makes it feel like it's getting worse is more people are talking about it and it's getting in front of us now more often. And so we feel like the world's ending more and it was better yeah. before. No, it was absolute, absolute hell before. Like the stuff that we weren't seeing going on, whether it be with the labor, the water, food, health, like now we've started to put money into it, um, support different places in genuine need. But now it's coming up on our, in our news more often, in our feeds, the companies are talking about it more. So it feels like it's become a worse issue. I think it's literally just bring it to the forefront that actually is recognizing the issue. Um, so no, it's in a positive direction. And when people rip on companies like greenwashing, it's kind of the same thing where I'm like, you can rip on the company for now hopping on the bandwagon of caring that's good because it keeps them accountable. And like, are they just throwing money or are they actually doing shit? But also the whole greenwashing wave, what it really means is people are starting now to take leadership roles who are coming from our generation who are actually care about these things. And we're starting to see the tide turns for companies to build it into their models. Even if it's just a way for them to sell more product and to make more profit, they're at least bringing it back into a conversation that, um, hopefully can be more tangible change so that's my thought on it is it feels worse but we're moving in the right direction it's just keeping that as the top of our cultural priority not the <laughs> the space thing for example yeah 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 that is, it's it's good we're trending in the right direction mm -hmm. um yeah there's whole like corporate social responsibility groups uh at companies now actually i had uh when for spot post when we were interviewing someone I, I they asked us like uh what our corporate social responsibility um policies were you know we were like a three-person <laughs> company uh, dude, I, <laughs> and I, I was like i was like kind of like take it back i was like i mean like i haven't even given it thought mm -hmm. um like we recycle but like <laughs> yeah but like thinking about it now is it's like it kind of is something that you can build your like foundation on even if it's just values that you work into your company mm -hmm. values like it is it is like one of those things that it's like you're never too small or too early to start yeah thinking about or like have too little of an impact the, the, thought, the thought there I go to also is there's this place in Denver called Digible. Um, they are, I think they were ranked one of the best places to work. And I've now met their like, co-founders and stuff like that. Um, it's really cool because talking with them is, at the end of the day, they do a, apartment sales marketing. Like They basically yeah. help pin up and get apartments rented. And there's this underlying thing. They can do it in more low-income areas and give access to people. And that's all great. But they're like, at the end of the day, we're doing marketing digital sales online what our actual purpose here is to do is to create like the best possible workplace for our employees so they move to a four-day work week they've got all these cultural things brought within it around um like hours you have to put towards other projects that you want to work on there's the charitable wing of things and like you having the voice to bring that into the company more um but it was cool because to the outside it's like it's not like their business was attempting to solve some world issue, but an actual massive world issue we face is being overworked, having the mental health and the stress of everything we're doing, not enough free time to explore our minds and our own passions. Like, so that's what they were solving via their workplace culture. And like, um, I don't know, that was kind of like an inspiring thing to me. And I'm still in talks with them about just what does that actually look like? Like what, um, what are they doing next with that? But it was an interesting shift from to change the world. Isn't just some, charitable cause as much as it's going into your own backyard like are the people here happy and excited about working and about life not just 
numbers plugging in and out and clocking out for the day. So, yeah, it's also a total like corporate strategy, dude. Like we, I remember like we just can't, it's so hard to hire engineers right now. Mm -hmm. Like salaries are going through the roof Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, we pay well, like we have similar benefits to everyone, but it's like, you're just going to lose out to like a bigger tech company or like more exciting tech company basically every time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, I was like, I, I pitched the four day work week at our company. I was like, you know, like you have to stand out somehow. Um, and I was like, that's it. totally, totally did not go for it at our company. <laughs> um, but like, you know, just like making it obvious that you care about your people is like, also good mm-hmm. for you because you'll get better people yeah 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 Yeah, it repeats the cycle of what you're looking for at the end of the day is people who align with your shit